Good morning. It's being called at the least a significant development and at the most a new era in Middle East peacemaking. Reaction has been pouring forth from around the world to the U.S. decision to open a dialogue with the Palestine Liberation Organization. As a matter of fact, the American government's first official contact with the PLO has already occurred through the U.S. ambassador in Tunisia. All this following PLO leader Yasser Arafat's clear acceptance of the U.S. conditions for opening talks towards a negotiated peace with Israel. We've had a chance to let these developments sink in now for a little more than a day, and we'd like now to take a closer look at them. Edward Said is professor of comparative literature at Columbia University and a member of the Palestine Palestinian National Council, the PNC. He joins us from New York. Hyman Bookbinder is the former Washington representative of the American Jewish Community. He's written a book about the Arab-Israeli conflict, and he is also a well-known member of the American Jewish community here in Washington. Jerome Siegel is a research scholar at the University of Maryland. He is the author of the book, Creating the Palestinian State, A Strategy for Peace. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Thank Edward Said, just tell me what you think uh, about this step by the United States and why it has, in your judgment, come to pass. Well, it's been a long time coming. I I'm, I'm happy that it occurred. I think it advances the cause of peace because it removes what I'd always thought of as, a, as an unnecessary obstacle so that the United States and uh, the representatives of the Palestinians can speak with each other. And I think uh, the main, uh, the main uh, result of it will be that the chances now of an international conference at which all of the issues will be discussed uh, directly by the parties uh, is that much closer. So I think, uh, on the whole, it's a, it's a very positive thing. Hammond Bookbinder. Well, um, we're right at a very important point. If it is a welcome thing, if it is a good thing, then I ask uh, Mr. Saeed and everybody else to answer the following question. If it's a good thing, is it not true that this good thing, this good day, could have taken place last week, last month, last year, 13 years ago? For 13 years, the PLO without any prodding from Mr. Saeed or anybody else here, refused to do what he finally did yesterday. So if today is a better day with hopes for the future, we should have had it, could have had, and hundreds of Palestinians would not have died in the meantime, and many, many Israelis would not have died in the meantime. So it's too late. It's, it's late, but it's not too late. Let's see what happens now. Mr. Saeed? Well, I, I, I'm delighted always to, to, to get words of wisdom uh, from, uh, from, from, uh, <laughs> from Monday morning quarterbacks. I, I think that the, the, uh, the important thing is that it took place. There were many reasons why it didn't take place in the past. One of the main reasons that, that it took place is because of the Intifada, the uprising on the West Bank. It's been in the cards since the middle 70s, when the, uh, when the PNC at its, uh, at its meetings, in the, as I say, in the middle 70s, decided on a course that would, in fact, involve a two-state solution. But uh, it's very difficult when you're constantly under attack. Uh, don't forget there was the invasion of Lebanon. There have been thousands of Palestinian lives, and I think lost. And I think one of the things that one should remember is that until, uh, until even now as we speak, the Israeli position is totally intransigent. They still, by the way, notice, I, I'd like you to keep this in your ears, that Israeli representatives uh, from the Likud, like Mr. Shamir and his other members of his party, still refer to the Palestinians not as the Palestinian people, but as the Palestinian Arabs, just another group of Arabs. And they still can't deal with the national uh, characteristics of the Palestinian people. If I may, Mr. And, Saeed. No, let me, let me just finish, Sorry. Mr. Bookbinder. I didn't, I didn't interrupt you, no, so no. let me just finish. So it, whatever the mix of circumstances, the important thing is that it was done by the Palestinians. And there has been no move no compromise at all by the Israelis who are sitting on the land conducting a brutal occupation which the entire world has now seen on, on television where people are arms are being broken by soldiers well, and so on and so forth. So I think, I think what we're talking about now is an important step and we would like, and I'm speaking for myself now as a Palestinian and as an American, we would like now a similar move by the Israelis. Now let's, let's clean right. this part up now. And then I gotta go to Mr. I, I say I say good naturedly to you, Mr. Saeed, you fell for the trap I laid out for you. What does the Intifada have to do with Mr. Arafat's saying three things yesterday that he had been asked for 13 years to say? 
It didn't require an intifada, did it? Let me, for let him me, to let me say, for in. him to say, no, don't jump I mean, in I yet. Did, I did, we I got, we've got to clean yeah, up this time. Mr. Bookbinder, I didn't come here to be harangued by you. All right, I don't want to I asked you a question that is much more interesting than your questions about the past. I'm asking you about the future. What What is it that's going to take a change? Uh, what is it, it going to take me, to, to cause right, a let, change? Let me, I will uh, jump in and Mr. Yeah, Said raises an interesting question is what will we expect from I'll Israel? Be, we will get to, to that. On it. And also the question yeah. about how the Intifada in, 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 in might have influenced uh, of certainly a lot of self-esteem, but I want Mr. Siegel to... Right, let, me, let me present it this. from an American point of view. Um, basically what we're dealing with is a foolish American foreign policy mistake that we got onto in 1975 when Kissinger adopted a strategy of preconditions. The whole idea of saying to the PLO that they had to do a variety of things other than simply say we're willing to talk peace and we want to sit down and negotiate. What we sort of should have said to them all along is that the door is open. Anytime you want to sit down at the conference table, come and do so. In order to see just how ridiculous the whole strategy of preconditions was, look at Namibia. We just worked out, after years of negotiating, a settlement in Namibia. Can you imagine where we were if we would have imposed preconditions on South Africa, Angola, SWAPO, the ANC, and all the others? We don't do that anywhere in the world. And all that's happened now is basically we've reversed a bit of American foolishness. And the good thing about it, actually, is that what it does are two things. One is that it reinforces the strategy that the PLO has adopted in Algiers of launching a peace initiative. It shows, as a matter of fact, that the strategy that they adopted does make sense and has changed American policy. And secondly, it contributes to something very deep that's going on, which is the real change of attitudes inside of Israel. And we've got now the Israeli peace movement coming out. They did, after Algiers, Peace Now movement in favor of negotiations with the PLO. And it's that deeper transformation inside of Israel and within the Palestinian community that's really what has to Look, go forward. Look, we are talking today one day after a historic development. Let's stay with that historic well, development. Well, the historic Just, development no, was a month you don't mind, ago. you have two to one on this program to begin with. It's not with, two so to one. It's Just, not two well, to one. Please let me say this. We're talking now about the action taken by our government yesterday. The only action, an important one, taken by the government is to say we will now dialogue with the PLO because after 13 long years, Mr. Arafat has finally said what had to be said. That's all that's happened. We haven't changed the conditions for peace. We haven't said anything else. And my only point here, and I wish we could stipulate that it's an accurate point, that had Mr. Arafat said this five years ago or ten years ago, today's happy day, you think of it as a happy day, could have taken place ten years ago. There is no possible argument against that. Uh, let me take a break and come back. I should also mention, because you mentioned the number of people and how we put together this broadcast, that last night and again today we uh, offered to interview, invite to this broadcast to appear with this group, to appear alone, the Israeli ambassador to the United States, Moshe Arad, who did his first interview in the United States on this broadcast. He made himself unavailable after doing almost every broadcast in the nation's capital. We still would like to have him come on this broadcast, but we tried very hard and were unsuccessful. We will continue this conversation when we come back. We're back. We're talking about the dramatic announcement by the State Department uh, that it would have conversations with the PLO in Tunisia, with the American ambassador uh, from the United States, Tunisia, will be there in conversation. Contact has already been made with the PLO. Joining me, Edward Said, Hyman Bookbinder, and Jerome Siegel. Creating the Palestinian State, I just want to mention this one time, is a book that Mr. Siegel wrote. He said in close, he mentioned in a piece in the Washington Post, let me add a final personal note. If it seems odd that a Jew should offer his thoughts on how Palestinians can be successful in their struggle for statehood, I should state my conviction that the struggle for an independent Palestinian state is also the struggle for a humane and safe Israel and that there can be no Judaism without a commitment to justice. And what he has recommended the Palestinians do was to declare them state, themselves a state as a first step so that I can put that in perspective for whatever we say after this, it may be helpful. Edward Said, where does it go from here? Do you believe that the conversation between PLO representatives and the American ambassador in Tunisia will lead somehow to an international conference or something else? Well, I think, I think that's in everyone's mind, uh, except perhaps the Israelis. But I, I think that the idea is that, uh, that one wouldn't want a dialogue to go on for many years without any particular direction or resolution. I think the, as uh, Mr. Schultz said yesterday, 
the hope is to, to get direct negotiations between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And I, I would hope that this is the point of, this, uh, of these con first uh, uh, contacts at, at a fairly low level. Well, at these, at, at these fairly low level conversations, are they going to deal with, do we expect them to deal with the substantive issues? Secretary Kissinger on another broadcast made the point that there is a recognition between Iran and Iraq, but they killed a lot of each other even though the, they recognized each other and didn't deal with the substantive oh, yeah. issues between them. When does that happen? Because well, I, the Palestinians I, I, have one idea about how much that territory ought to be that they want for a state. The Israelis have another idea. Well, look, I mean, in, insofar as the Palestinians have accepted, as some members of the Israeli government and the United States have accepted 242, 242 Resolution 242 is about giving up of land occupied in 1967. Now, obviously, there are different ideas. Palestinians say that we would like to have our state on the West Bank and Gaza. The Israelis say we would like to keep it all, or some others say we would like to keep part of it, or some variation of, of both of those positions. But I think uh, the idea that a dialogue is going to lead to peace uh, automatically is, is, is probably you know, a little far-fetched. But I think an important psychological barrier has been broken, a taboo, uh, in my opinion, as, as Jerry Siegel said, I mean, a senseless and, and immature and pointless taboo against Palestinians, put in there by Kissinger. Against uh, Palestinians or against the PLO? Well, I mean, <laughs> the PLO represents Palestinians. Okay, I For the last that. 20 years, there's been a kind of futile effort to try and find other Palestinians. And the result has been, of course, that the PLO is well, more let, and more let me make this point. So has, it's not a question of, I'm sorry. Now, let me just make this point with Mr. Bookbinder. Has this decision by the State Department given simply taken away the value of the Israeli effort to somehow find some other Palestinians that they can deal no, with? I, As the State no, Department said, look, the people you deal with is the PLO. We're going to deal with them. And if the Israelis no, want to deal with somebody, they now have to deal with the PLO. It, it's not all or nothing. Uh, I think there's too little notice been given to the words of Mr. Schultz last night. In fact, Mr. Schultz said that one of the purposes of this dialogue, which he is now initiating, will determine which Palestinians shall sit at the negotiating table. So, Mr. Schultz is not... But it no longer not, eliminates the PLO. No, it doesn't. No, it, it, it gives the PLO a place at the table, but not necessarily the only place. In other words, Mr. Schultz has not said, and he should not say, he should not say that the PLO is the sole representative of the Palestinian people. After all, there are hundreds of thousands of Palestinians in Israel proper, there are hundreds of thousands or more in Jordan, so PLO has earned a place at the table. It's important now to get all other Palestinians, and it's important to get Israel to the table. And there's yes, no certainty I, I don't, that I don't we will. I disagree with that, actually. Yeah. I think that's Let a me, good point that yeah. you made. That the point is that the, that the Palestinian representatives, uh, whoever they are, although, of course, the whole world knows it's the PLO, including all Palestinians. I, I don't think Mr. Bookbinder wants to speak for them all. Neither necessarily do I, but I think, you know, the, the logic of it is that there is a single national authority that has emerged. And he's right about Mr. Schultz's caution, which I thought unnecessary. But uh, I, I think there's, they're trying to preserve a little bit of the old fiction that there could be some other representative. But the fact is, that, of course, that King Hussein has pulled out. Yeah, and, get... and the chances are of any other representative appearing at this point, particularly with the, uh, with the status of the PLO acknowledged by the entire world, uh, is unlikely. But uh, all right, let's accept that. The point is now that having created places at the table, what is it going to take for Israelis? to come to their side. Right, let, let me let Mr. Siegel have an opportunity to speak. Yeah, me, that's a good me, question, and I think we ought to get to it, but let me let Mr. Siegel speak. There, there are two things I think that it's very important for this initial dialogue to focus on. And I think the key to understanding where it should go is this, that ultimately a Palestinian state in its, in its, in its full existence, an Israeli troop withdrawal, is not going to occur because the United States issues a diktat to Israel. Ultimately, it's going to have to be worked out between the Israeli people and the Palestinian people. What we need is not just the beginning of negotiations, because negotiations can very easily deadlock and break down, and that'll create a very dangerous situation. But that's not even what's happening What, what we now. need really is the preconditions for successful negotiations. And there are two things that we should be looking for right off the bat. One is a straightforward ceasefire on military actions across the Lebanese border, whether it's Israeli attacks on Palestinian positions in Lebanon or it's any sort of military action coming in from Lebanon. That's one thing, and that would go a long way to, to getting off of the table any possibilities that would destabilize what we've already achieved. How about stopping and the, the second rock throwing? Thing, the rock throwing. Rock throwing, rock, throwing, rock throwing is something that, first of all, as Arafat said, he cannot stop. And, oh, and come secondly, on now. You don't mean that, do you? I, 
I, I do mean it because because what's going on... Well, would you like to see the rock stop? Look, the, would you the, like to see... The, I'd like to see the, the reason end the rock for the rock throwing, stopping. People can end the rock throwing of the Israelis. I'd, I'd like to see what? If Mr. the Israelis Bookbinder. extend... Would you accept this formulation, If the Israelis, what, if no, the Israelis no, extend... Hold, hold on, Mr. Said. If I'll the Israelis just extend to the Palestinians civil liberties, if they allow peaceful, nonviolent demonstrations on the West Bank and stop tear gassing them why and stop beating so up people... Why is so then, difficult then we might for you see to agree that the rock should stop now, and if the rock stopped, there won't be that inhumane treatment that you're talking about. No, but listen, Mr. Okay. The Israeli okay. soldiers are defending themselves against began, rocks. Since you made that point, let Mr. Said make the last point, yeah, which no, is the that... The point is, it isn't the inhumane treatment that just began after the rocks be began to be thrown. The, the reason for the rock throwing after 21 years of occupation is that the condition of people, Palestinians, on the West Bank and Gaza, under military occupation, had so degenerated into... Uh, unlivable conditions where you, if you want, for example, to plant a tree or a, a fruit uh, a branch or to change something in your house, you needed a permit. But Mr. Yeah. Saeed, uh, would that it the not Palestinians be are forced to pay taxes, that they're not represented. I that plead house arrests, with you. I mean, what do you, I of plead property. To? What do you A military mean? occupation, Mr. Bookbinder, is a military occupation. People everywhere have the right to resist it. Now, come on now, Dr. Saeed. I'm asking a, really a simple, narrow question. We agreed, I thought, a few minutes ago that we've got to try to get Israel to the table. Would not a cessation of rock throwing, and I use that but what simple about, phrase. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why don't Israel you join me? Something Why don't... I, Mr. Bookbinder. Are you speaking for the there Israelis? There will be That's no rubber bullets or any kind of bullet shot if there's no rock thrown. Why can't you... Have the Israelis said that? Are you saying that? Do you have to wait for me? Do you have to wait for me? The Israelis have said that they're going to increase the levels of violence. Dr. Saeed, do you have to wait for Mr. Arafat to give you permission to say this? That rock should not be thrown during a delicate why period. Why are you making? Mr. Why are you're you just not the able? Issue. You're why making can't an issue you of agree to a very instead reasonable of making an request issue of the business of occupation? Back in a moment, stay with us. Mr. Siegel, what do you think, Professor Siegel, has to happen? Uh, you'll outline a strategy for peace in which you talk first about the establishment. Palestinians, without any regard for anybody else establishing a state and saying we are a state and then issuing a currency and say we have a currency and doing a whole series of other things. Looking at where we are now, where do you put the significance of having this Palestinian state talk to the Israelis and what's got to happen before that can occur? Well, I think, I think it's critical. That they, that, they, that they do talk to each other. I'm not convinced that the Israelis are prepared to sit down and talk to representatives of the state of Palestine. I think that ultimately what has to happen is political transformation inside of Israel for this to occur. Is there that right? Go ahead. There are many Israelis that are. Polls show that, that over 50% of the Israelis are prepared to open negotiations with the PLO. But this is not, this is not reflected in the positions of the leadership. Or now, the elections. Or the, or the elections. Yeah, I, would, I, would, the election. I would agree with that. Now, uh, I think the deep thing, I think what we have to constantly remember is that once negotiations get started, it's an enormously difficult task. The real issue is whether or not the basis for resolution has been achieved. What I would suggest the most important thing that could, that, that, that could happen right now is to, for the Israelis to pull back on their efforts to repress the Intifada and to extend a realm of civil liberties to Palestinians. The Israelis want to do something concrete, and they haven't done anything but yet. I, they could free Faisal I don't, Hussein. I don't have to tell you that the Israelis are saying terrorism against them continues, and they are making allegations that it is connected to certain ago. members of the PLO. Two days ago. Yeah, now, yeah. and don't well, the Israelis look, have some right to expect the, terrorist acts against the, them the Israelis cease. do the, Isra the, the Israelis do there's an important distinction there's an important distinction between attacks on civilians and attacks on soldiers now the problem here is that emotionally and politically any kind of attacks whether they're on civilians or soldiers has come to be thought of as terrorism the environment that we need is an is an environment in which attacks of that sort on both sides cease but the PLO while it has renounced terrorism has not renounced it has not renounced a right to struggle against Israeli soldiers. And it's, it is certainly not going to do that so long as there are also, as we saw just a few days ago, Israeli military attacks on Palestinian encampments. And what we need Charlie, in order to set the I right environment I, is a ceasefire that the United States could help bring I about. 
on attacks on the military forces of either side. I want to express a public have. prayer that the words we've just now heard and the words of Dr. Said are not the words we'll hear from the Palestinians out in the Middle East, because if the Israelis hear that as a condition for a useful dialogue, they've got to stop resisting stone throwing, and in Dr. Said's words, they've got to end the occupation before there can be a meaningful That's not what I've said. Look, uh, that Mr. is Mr. insanity. Mr. Bookbinder, That's, I what I've said? That's insanity. Yeah, yeah right. but it's not what I've said. Well, you're what? not listening. You're, Mr. you're reading Mr. into Mr. it. Dr. Could Said, I, I just say and this is the last, because Look. I've got to go. I'm up against the clock. Listen. What I would say is, in the end, obviously, if there's going to be peace, there can't be military occupation. But I think that a sensible uh, step would be to agree, as uh, Mr. Siegel has been saying, to agree on interim steps. So that, I, obviously, it, it would be foolish to expect the Israeli soldiers to pack their, their tanks up and, and, and leave overnight. They're not going to do that. But what they can do is gradually ease the restrictions on Palestinians so that the reason for the rock throwing uh, is removed, Gradu or is this seen to be in the process of being Dr. removed? Sa so that there is a gesture. You don't want them to stop throwing rocks. That's what you're saying. No, I'm, uh, please, Mr. Bookbinder, don't Isn't twist what I'm what saying. saying? You know, you're you're no, extremely and, and aggressive. Have not you been just able listen to, to me for a second and hear what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm actually saying something rather more All gentle right. than that. I'm saying that create conditions for an occupation, uh, for a population that's under military occupation, right. that ease their their life so that they're not and and put that in a context that is oh. moving towards. Uh, accommodating Palestinian Edward Said, Simon Bookbinder, Jerome Siegel, I, I thank I all of you discussion. very much. Thank, thank you. you.